And Mr Speaker, that is a key aspect of this legislation. I support the legislation. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Honourable uh, Ruth Dyson. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Mr Speaker, it gives me a lot of pleasure to speak in the third reading of these three bills, New Zealand Public Health and Disability Amendment Bill, Mental Health Commission Amendment Bill and the Charities Amendment Bill Number 2, um, which previously came under the Crown Entities Reform Bill. Can I begin by acknowledging the constructive way in which our Select Committee worked on these three bills? Um, there were a large number of submitters, some of whom were incredibly angry and frustrated and in opposition to Part 3, and they were treated by uh, all members of the Select Committee, including members who did not agree with their views, with um, the respect that I think um, gave both the members of the Select Committee and the submitters appropriate credit. So I just want to acknowledge uh, that. I think it's a good way for the Select Committee to operate. Uh, I also want to acknowledge our advisers. Generally, when you have a piece of legislation, you get advisers from one department or agency, and in this particular instance, we asked for advisers from three agencies. We had an advisor from State Services Commission, one from, uh, I'm not entirely sure if the person was from the Ministry of Health or the National Health Board, um, but a, a public health expert, and also an advisor from the Department of Internal Affairs. So I want to thank the ministers for making those advisers available, and also acknowledge the hard work that the advisers put in. Uh, in fact, a lot of work uh, right up to the last minute when we had an unexpected change to some minor wording in the legislation and the advisers were able to just deal with that extraordinarily competently as were our select committee clerks. Uh, Mr Speaker, as previous speakers have noted, um, because of the very different nature of the three bills that we're considering, um, it is certainly appropriate for there to be three separate votes held on it. There's a, a huge difference between the um, Public Health Bill and the Mental Health Commission Bill and the Charities Commission Bill, and I certainly look forward to separate votes being held on those um, three bills, even though we're debating them all in one section under, in this third reading. To just go to the first bill, um, Mr Speaker, the Public Health and Disability Amendment Bill, I suppose the best thing you could really say about this is it's the first thing in the public health space that's been done by the national government. So, that, you know, that's a bit of a move in the right direction. And uh, certainly we heard from submitters to the bill that even though the investment in public health, which we all know will reduce the need for uh, further spending in health down the track, because if you, in, if you invest in public health, you're less likely to need to invest in secondary and tertiary care later, but also, of course, investment in public health greatly contributes to the overall well-being of individuals and families and therefore our communities. So, you know, it's good that we've, we've got some action in this space. It's just a real shame that the only action in the public health space is rearranging the agencies rather than looking at a decent public health strategy and investment. But uh, nevertheless, the submitters to this section of the legislation we're pretty enthusiastic about it, and, and uh, th that, that was good to hear. In terms of the second part to the bill, um, that was not as strongly supported, and I guess the crux of it, from my perspective, and, and I recalled it at the Select Committee during the discussion, Mr Speaker, was one of, uh, it took me back to the time when one of the most impressive actions took place in this Parliament. We have a lot of action in here, but not many of them are what you'd really call truly impressive. And that was when, that was when the Right Honourable Jenny Shipley and, and the Honourable Helen Clark, Honourable Helen Clark as she was then, uh, made a deal basically across the House. Uh, it was before other parties were in Parliament. A deal between the National Party and the Labour Party that mental health was going to start getting the respect and value and support that it needed within the health system. We used to hear frequently that mental health was the Cinderella of the health system. And the most vulnerable people in our society, those who need support or services uh, within the mental health system, were the people that not only were missing out on that support or services, but were being used as political fodder and footballs, including in this very parliament. And the deal 
that, that the Right Honourable Jenny Shipley and Helen Clark made at that time was that that should cease, that we should start giving uh, people within the mental health system proper respect, proper support. And I think that was amazing leadership, and I want to pay tribute to both those women. Um, we know um, from many discussions in this House about the establishment of the Mental Health Commission, about the blueprint money, about the ring fencing of it, and how that was so important to people who could see the money always being pulled at by other parts of the health system. It's very rare that you'll get anyone in the health system saying, thank you very much, we've got adequate funding. Uh, perhaps we've got a little bit too much we'd like to give some back. It's not a common occurrence in the health system. So, so there was a determination that that blueprint money would be ring fenced for mental health. Mr Chairman, the concerns have been well expressed about this part of the bill. In terms of maintaining that integrity, the new blueprint's coming out soon, just in a, in a matter of weeks. We cannot ever let mental health become the Cinderella of the health system again. And I want to put it on the record that Labor will not tolerate it. And I implore members uh, from all parties in the House to reflect on the agreement that was made between Jenny Shipley and Helen Clark and say that for the, for the most vulnerable often in our community, that was a huge leap forward, and we have a responsibility to maintain it. So whether, whether it's the functions of the new commissioner, uh, as proposed in this legislation, whether it's the maintenance of the ring fencing, of the blueprint money, uh, whether it, it is the funding level increasing at appropriate levels, we know that in the last three budgets that the blueprint money has not been reached, the target has not been reached, and that's a shame. Um, but, but also the proactive approach, the independence and the advocacy that the current Mental Health Commissioner is able to act on. Th those are functions that we will be monitoring because, because this will pass into law and it is just too important an issue to say, well, whatever happens, happens. So, so that's notice really to the House, Mr Speaker that this is, is not an issue that's going to go away. It's going to be very, very, very closely monitored on behalf of people who often do not have the access or the ability or the voice to speak for themselves. The third part of the bill, um, Mr Speaker, uh, I, I challenged uh, my Deputy Chair, Chris Ockenvold, to name one submitter who supported this bill, and I, I didn't hear him uh, mention one submitter. Uh, we had a large number of submitters talking about this part of the bill, and I don't think that I could express strongly enough, in appropriate language in the House, their opposition. There was nobody who thought this was a good idea. There were a lot of people who thought it was particularly foolish, and all the submitters said it went against the very intention of the Charities Commission legislation. So this third part of the bill should not proceed, in our view, uh, Mr Speaker. It's just total nonsense. We had organisations like the Todd Foundation, the Tyndall Foundation. They're quite big. Todd, t Todd Foundation? Heard of them? Tyndall Foundation? Quite big in this sector. Uh, Philanthropy New Zealand? Quite a big organisation. Represents every single philanthropic group in the country. Uh, and we had the Association of Non-Governmental Organisations of New Zealand represents every single community and voluntary sector organisation. So all the key players in the space said this is nonsense, this is going to totally undermine the independence and the autonomy, the integrity of our charitable sector, which this parliament worked so hard to create, and, and the reason that Minister Goodhue gave for introducing it was just nonsense. You know, somehow it's going to be all so efficient and effective. Well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But also more than that, Mr. Speaker, at the moment there are two major reviews going going on, or one is already underway, one is about to commence. One is the review of the Incorporated Societies legislation, and the other is the review of the Charities Commission legislation. Why on earth would you make huge structural change to the very nature of the Charities Commission, basically gut it, put it into a department which, for all the, the fine words from the opposition, 
cannot be independent to, from a minister because it's a government department. It's, it's not an independent crown entity. Why would you do that? Why would anyone do that sort of change when neither the Incorporated Society Review Order. nor the Charities Review Time has had expired. been completed? At the very least, Order. give this organisation that chance. I've indicated to the member that her time has expired. Thank, Thank you. you. Kevin Haig.